Okay, now we're going to embark on a new technique that expands on what we did in the first term of statistical reasoning in terms of being able to compare means between groupings. And we're going to do something called linear regression, which is a way to relate a continuous outcome through its mean or estimated mean to predictors vis-a-vis -vis the equation of a line. And we're going to start with something called simple linear regression, and we'll build up through this module to bigger regression models. Before we even start with the substantive side of things, I think it'd be prudent to review the equation of a line. Many of you haven't done this since high school algebra and had no reason to resurrect it any time in your post-high school life, but uh, if some of you may have. But what I'm going to try and do is highlight some important facets of a line that you may not have thought of before that will play a role, an important role in what we do with the line in a statistical context. So to start, recall from your algebra days, there are two values which will uniquely define any line in space, in two-dimensional space. There's something called the y-intercept, which is where the line crosses the y-axis on a two-way graph. In other words, it's the point on the y-axis when x is equal to zero. The y-axis is actually the vertical line through x equals zero, and it's the value on that corresponding to an x of 0 that is the y-intercept. And then what's called the slope, sometimes affectionately called the rise over the run, how much y changes for each one unit change in x. So if I were to give you a line to hold, I could give it to you with a certain slope, but until I gave you the y-intercept, you wouldn't have anywhere to put it. So the slope determines the slant and the direction of the slant, and the y-intercept determines where you put the line on a graph. So you've probably seen this notation before. It's very commonly used in sort of standard algebra. Y equals mx plus b, the sort of generic equation of a line, where we relate and we estimate y values by plugging in x, multiplying them by that m, and then adding b. In this very generic formulation, the thing next to the x, the m, represents the slope of the line, and b is the y-intercept. And of course, in statistics, we've got to have our own notation to show you the same thing. So other ways to write the same equation, you're just simply replacing those letters with other letters. One might be y equals b0 plus b1x, where b0 takes the place of b in the previous formulation and is now the y-intercept for our line. And b1 takes the place of m and is the slope for this line. And the notation we're going to use when we deal with regression and such, but we could use any, really, but one commonly used notation is to replace those with their Greek counterparts, betas. So y equals beta naught plus beta 1x. Here again, it's just beta naught represents the y-intercept and beta 1 the slope. And just in general, you'll see, again, from textbook to textbook, publication to publication, different formulations align. The thing next to the x, whatever letter is used to represent it, is your slope. The thing that's alone and added to that expression with the x is the y-intercept, regardless of what letters used to represent it. Again, this intercept, now called beta naught or beta zero, is the value of y when x is zero. It is the point on the graph where the line crosses the vertical axis at the coordinate x equals zero and y equals beta naught. And here's an example of the y-intercept on a two-way graph. The slope, beta 1, is the change in y corresponding to a unit increase in x. So here, represented by the dotted lines, are two values of x that differ by one unit. And this shaded area here, how much y changes as we go from the first x value to the second, is our slope, beta 1. And here we have a positive slope. Y increases as X increases. Another way to think of the slope, which is actually saying the same thing, but in a slightly different language, is it is really just the difference in Y values for X plus 1 compared to X. It's really the difference in Y for two values of X who differ by 1. And the important thing to know about a line is that this difference or change is the same for any one unit in x across the entire line. 
That's the definition of a line. Wherever we are on the line, the difference in y for two x values who differ by one unit is always the slope beta 1. So you can see here, wherever we are on that line in this picture, the same change occurs in y for a one unit change in x. All of the information, if you think about it, this is very powerful. All the information about the difference in the y value for two differing values of x is contained in the slope. Even if we want to compare y values for two values of x that differ by more than one. Think about this, for example. Suppose I wanted to estimate the difference in y values for two values of x that were separated by three units. How much would they differ in terms of y? Well, for every one unit difference between those two would incur a difference in y of the slope, beta 1. So the collective difference in y for two values of x that are three units apart is beta 1 plus beta 1 plus beta 1, or 3 times beta 1. So even though beta 1 itself represents a difference in y for one unit different in x, Multiples of beta 1 represent differences in y for more than one unit differences and less than one unit differences in x. If the slope is 0, it indicates that there is no association between y and x. The values of y are the same regardless of the values of x. y takes on the same value everywhere on the line. If the slope is positive, it indicates that there is a positive association that the values of y increase with increasing values of x. And if the slope is negative, less than zero, it indicates that there is a negative association. The values of y decrease with increasing values of x. As x goes up, y goes down. And here's a schematic just showing you examples of three different lines, one with a positive slope, which we were looking at before, one with a slope of zero, which is perfectly flat because it takes on the same value of y everywhere and a line with a negative slope. What we're going to do in linear regression situations is, well, we're not going to have points that fit exactly on a line. What we do, given a cloud of points, is we estimate a line that relates the mean of some outcome y to a predictor x. So the line that we estimate is estimating our y value in the line we're estimating is the estimated mean of some quantity as a function of some predictor x. So the lines we're going to look at look something like this. E of y is one way, a fancy way of writing expected or mean value of y. We're going to relate this to x through an equation which has an estimated intercept and slope in this format. The estimated intercept b0 hat and the estimated slope, b1 hat, are sometimes called estimated regression coefficients. These two quantities are estimated using this set of data. And the line that's estimated to relate the mean of y to x through these two quantities is the line that I'm going to put in quotes here, and we'll explain this technically later in the lecture, fits the data best. Many times you'll just see us write the equation as y equals b0 hat plus b1 hat x, or y hat equals b0 hat plus b1 hat x. But what we're doing in linear regression, whatever we put on the left-hand side, whether it's we just lazily say y or y hat or e of y, what we're really doing is relating the average y value for a given x. We will see that in a regression context, this slope, b1 hat, this estimated slope, is nothing more than a mean difference, an estimated mean difference in y between two groups who differ by one unit in x. In other words, how much the mean of y changes for a one unit increase in x. And we'll put some real numbers on this in the next two sections where we'll look at some examples from real data and give some physical meaning to the quantities that we've so far referred to in their Greek letter format.